Good morning, New Life, and welcome to church online again. It is certainly a pleasure and definitely a privilege to get to worship together uh, with you from afar as one body, um, as one church. And Jesus himself said, uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against, and we believe that this morning. Uh, so as we prepare our minds and prepare our hearts uh, for worship this morning, let's, let's pray and uh, ask the Lord to, to come be with us wherever we're at. Heavenly Father, we magnify and glorify you this morning. We ask, Lord, that our worship be genuine wherever we're at. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to put aside other distractions in this moment, Lord, to praise you, to lift up your name, and to thank you for your faithfulness that you've shown us time and time again. Lord God, we love you. We give you our praise in Jesus' name.
comes from 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, and it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. That's good news. That's worthy of praise. Let's sing this. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he was. Sinners plunge me. 
She did a fabulous job, didn't she, on the drum? And uh, looks like looks like it's a pretty full crowd, and you're you get to looking better all the time. Let me just give these few announcements this morning. Uh, as far as I know, Jim and Anita's daughter is is doing fine, and so is um, uh, Jesse and Barbara's granddaughter. Other than that, I don't know of no one else that has uh, been diagnosed in the church with COVID-19. Some some have been asking. And uh, let's remember Paul and Susan in our prayers. Uh, Paul had his second chemo treatment, and uh, we certainly need to lift him up in our prayers that the Lord will be with them in this hour. And then Charles and uh, Belinda, you've been praying for Belinda's, uh, uh, for Charles' mother, and let's remember them in our prayers on Friday. I think it was Thursday night she passed away, and uh, on Friday the family headed towards Johnson City. And so we certainly want to remember Charles and Belinda and that family in our prayers and the loss of Charles' mother. As a matter of fact, I'd recommend the church or encourage the church to send cards and just let them know that we're thinking about them and that we're praying for them in this hour of their loss. And then let's continue to remember our small businessmen and those that are struggling. Uh, most of our folk, we have two or three that are unemployed in this downturn. And so let's continue to lift them in our prayers as well. And then I just want to uh, pause to thank you for the offering. Uh, it's just amazing to me. I'm always, um, um, I'm just amazed at the people of God. I don't know why you would think after all these years of uh, doing, uh, of being a pastoring that I would just uh, get used to it, but I don't ever really want to get used to it. I, I just appreciate what you do and what you are doing and appreciate the, the tithes and offerings that have come through the mail at 200 Lafayette Drive, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 37830, 200 Lafayette Drive, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 37830. I think that's an extra effort, and, uh, and you've made that effort. And I, again, just want to thank you for the effort that you've made, and the, and the church is doing, at this point, doing very well and, uh, because of you. And so thank you for, for all that you're doing. And then I just want to remind parents that uh, Superbook Academy is uh, offering videos online and so go to the link that Kristen sent you through the e-news and look up the Superbook Academy and uh, if the children would like to watch some of the, the, uh, the videos I'm sure they would uh, might occupy their time in a good way over these weeks of uh, being kind of quarantined in. Well I want to go to the scripture for a few minutes we've been uh, before Easter, we were in the book of Jonah, and I want to return to the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 3 in the Word of God, and, uh, and speak to you from, from the scripture. Kind of uh, fun to think about Jonah. We've kind of grew up with Jonah in Sunday school and children's church. We've heard the story nearly our whole life until, until we kind of think of it as a children's story. But the reality is that, it, that he's, a, he's a prophet of God, and there's something to be learned from Jonah's life. As a matter of fact, Jonah, God gives Jonah an assignment, and Jonah decides to do his own thing. You remember the story. He's, uh, he's, ship, he's uh, on a ship, and uh, the seas are raging. They throw Jonah overboard. He knows he's been disobedient to God. A large uh, fish swallows him, and in the belly of the fish, Jonah makes some life-changing alterations, some life-changing decisions. And that's where we pick it up in, in chapter 3 in the Word of God. Uh, Jonah chapter 3, then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message that I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. As a matter of fact, if you listen to it, that's basically his message. It's a very simple message that he repeats over and over again. 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. 
When the king of Nineveh heard that what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat in heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. Not one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments and mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. And when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out all the destruction that he had threatened. Let's pray. Father, in these few moments that we have together this morning, would you speak to us from the Word of God? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm using a, an outline by, by Rick Ward. The title of the message this morning is, What to Do When you, you Get Another Chance. You know, life has lots of twists and turns, and for the most of us, we've not had just one chance. We've had multiple chances. I used to hear my dad talk about the things that he'd passed up in his youth that he wished he had done differently. For you and I, we have had multiple chances. And again, COVID-19 and all the things that have happened in our lives opens up another opportunity for a second chance. Our walk with God it gives us another opportunity for a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth chance. In the, in the book of Jonah, Jonah is given a second chance. Listen, listen to what the scripture, Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message that I have given you. And so for a few minutes this morning, and I'll, I'll, I'll not make it too long because I see Josh over there and his knees kind of uh, going up and down. But uh, for a few moments, I, I want to I wanna discuss this, uh, this concept of what I do when God gives me a second chance. What I can do when God gives me a second chance. Number one, the first thing that I need to do if God gives me a second chance, as God has, is to live with a profound gratitude. To live with profound gratitude. I don't know. There's some things that I've learned uh, about myself and about life uh, that, that in COVID, this uh, period of quarantine that I, I didn't know. As a matter of fact, if you had asked me sometime back if I washed my hands and if my hands were clean, I would have told you yes. I, I, I wash when I think is, a, is a, the normal times. But since uh, COVID-19 and all the press about hand washing, I, I kind of have uh, found myself washing my hands when I come in the house washing my hands when I go into another room. I wash my hands when I come into the church. I wash my hands before I get on the computer. I wash my hands after I've been on the computer. It's amazing how many times I have washed my hands. If you'd asked me before if I washed my hands, I would have said yes. I'm a nurse, I've, I've worked in the hospitals, when I go in and out of rooms, when I'm at the house, when I go to the restroom, all those things that we normally do when we, th when we think of washing our hands. But I didn't realize until COVID-19, how little I actually wash my hands. As a matter of fact, I'm washing my hands so much now that I'm using a little cream on them. It's amazing what we don't know about ourselves. In the text that, that I read to you in the Word of God, Jonah is in the, in, the, in the belly of the fish, Jonah chapter 2 in the Word of God, toward the end of it, he said, and listen to the Word of God, Jonah told God, I will sing my thanksgiving to you, I'll sacrifice to you, and I'll do what I promised you to do, because salvation comes from you, Lord. Then God ordered the fish to spit up Jonah onto the beach, and it did it. Now, it's a, it's a powerful statement. Even in the, in the belly of the fish, Jonah begins to praise the Lord. And so if, when God gives us a second chance, when God gives us a fresh start, when God opens up new opportunity for us, uh, that we should live with thanksgiving in our heart. Let me say it this way. I, I thought about this, this whole COVID-19 and the quarantine and all the things that have happened. And you would have to agree with me that you appreciate the cashiers more than you've ever appreciated them. I, I wondered myself how many times I've walked through the line at Walmart or, or, or McDonald's or someplace and I really haven't appreciated those that serve me. But this, this second chance that God has given has opened, given me an awareness of, of those that, that serve and those that actually serve me. And I think to myself, I'm grateful for those that serve. 
I, I, I've listened and thought about those that are, in the, that, are, that are still driving trucks, that are bringing supplies to the grocery stores. And I think to myself, I'm grateful to God for, for that service. I'm grateful to God that, that I'm not scrounging for something to eat. I'm grateful to God for, for the people that serve others, even, even in, in the way of trucking. I think I, to myself, I'm grateful for the police. And, and grateful for law enforcement. I'm grateful for those that, that serve the public. And I, I got to thinking about all the people that have served me and served you. And I think to myself that when I, when I get a second chance, if this thing lifts, then I, and as this thing lifts, and while I'm in it, I want to be a more grateful person. I want to be a, a more grateful person. I'm grateful for Tony. I, I'm grateful for Lance. I'm grateful for, for Jim and Eddie and Cy. And I can go through the list. I'm sure I'll forget. But, but there, there are tons of people that serve the public. And I'm grateful for your service. And I'm grateful for your, your work. When we give a second chance, when God gives us a second chance, it, then we ought to be grateful for it. There should be gratitude in our heart. I, I was thinking about it the other day in, in the church. As a matter of fact, uh, th this recording and the beautiful music prior to the, the, the message. I maybe haven't been as grateful for the musicians and the singers that I should have been. I got to thinking the other day, I, I, those that come in on, and work during the week to try to make this happen, and I, I'm just grateful that, that when we pause, uh, life has a pause, that we begin to thank those and bless those that have helped us. I think of Jason and Kristen and, and their work. And, and Terry has been playing the, the, the drums. Uh, the cajon, I think it's called. And, uh, and uh, Terry has been playing the bass guitar. Uh, or, or Randall has been playing the bass guitar. And Tina has been singing with Jason. And, and, and Larry has been playing. And sometimes he plays the guitar. Sometimes the, the piano. What an what a unbelievable group of people that, that God has blessed New Life with. And I think to myself, I am grateful. I'm grateful. Never let me take for granted again the people that serve me and serve us. When, when Jonah's in the belly of the whale, he begins to praise God. He, it changes the way that he thinks and the way that he responds toward life. He's much more grateful. I thought to myself, I'm grateful for the people of God. I watched as the letters come, came in to the mailbox, and I, I, I listened to, 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 to those that, that knew the counting, and I think to myself, I'm so I'm so grateful for the faithful people of God. They, they give, whether they're in service or not in service. Uh, Jonah, Jonah told God, I'll sing my thanksgiving to you, and I'll sacrifice to you, and I'll do what I promised you to do. Uh, Jonah comes out of, out of the, the, the second chance with a much more grateful heart. Secondly, I, I would remind you that, that, that when Jonah comes out, he makes his, his mission the priority of his life. Listen to what he, what he said, what the Word of God says. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took him three days to see it all. Sometimes in life, when those times come and we're given second chances, when we leave those difficult times, we're reminded that our mission is a priority. That you and I have a mission in our lives that is not so much about the career, and not so much about retirement, not so much about all the things that we've made life to be. That really God has placed us here with a mission for a purpose. And when Jonah comes out of this crisis, when Jonah comes out of this solemn moment, when Jonah comes out of this crying out to God, he gets back to the priority of his life. I pray to God that, that when, when we are released from this quarantine, that something will have happened in our quiet time and in our spiritual moments in our lives when we realize that there's more to life than all the things that we've made it to be. That indeed the Lord has created us to accomplish his will. And, and, and I'm, I'm praying that God will help us. God will help us. That God will help me. That God will help you to make my life mission the, the, my top priority. That, that we begin to reevaluate what's important. And we'll begin to, to look at life differently. 
God's gifts and his call, the Bible says in Romans chapter 11, verse 29, uh, cannot be withdrawn. We, our, our circumstances in life change, but, but, but our calling and what God has asked us to do and our purpose in our life is, is forever. Let me go to number three. Don't delay. Obey today. Now, that's pretty simple, isn't it? This time, Jonah immediately headed to Nineveh in obedience to the Lord, to, to the word of the Lord. Immediately, immediately he, he headed to Nineveh. You know, uh, my kids, when they were, they were growing up, uh, I, I gave them chores. And uh, so uh, lots of chores. As a matter of fact, one time, uh, I, I won't tell you which one it was, but one of my children said, well, I knew why you had kids, because you wanted little slaves. And, uh, and it was not why I had kids, but I, I did ask them to uh, complete the chores and do things that, that uh, Tina and I had asked. And, uh, and periodically, I'd ask them to take out the trash. And they would say, not now. Hmm. Have you ever heard that before? Or I'd ask them to mow the lawn. And they would say, can I do it another day? Or I'd ask them to do something else, and, and they tried to prolong it, or they tried to delay it, or let me wait to the commercial. Have you ever heard that? Or let me, let me do it another day, and on the list would go. You, you know what? Delayed obedience is really disobedience. Can I say it again? Delayed obedience is really disobedience. When, we, when, we're, when we're putting off what God has been asking us to do, when, we, when God, is that still small voice, has been speaking to us, and the Word of God has been speaking to us, and God has been challenging us, and God has been, been calling us to, to accomplish His will for our life, and, and we've been de delaying Him, that delay becomes disobedience, disobedience to God. I, I, I don't know how it is in your home, but, but I didn't allow it. I, I, would, I would tell them to, to take out the trash, if that's what I'd ask them to. I would tell them the forecast for the next day it was going to rain, and then the, the grass would be too high. Uh, listen, oft times in our lives, if we're not careful, we delay. And that delay in our lives becomes disobedience. Sometimes... That delay causes us to talk ourselves out of what God has asked us to do. And sometimes that delay allows other people to talk us out of what God wants us to do. And so we're, we're not to delay, we're, we're to, to be obedient to God. That number four, let me hasten on. We, I, I need to accept my responsibility to, to warn others. I need to accept my responsibility to, to warn others. In the second chance that God gave Jonah, Jonah left. Jonah was, 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 was released from the fish, and, and he went to do the will of God to warn the city of Nineveh. He, he, he did God's will. You know, you and I, all, all of us here together this morning, that, that we've been asked to warn. We've been asked to, to minister. We've been asked, listen to what the word of God, now the city of Nineveh was so big that it took three days to walk around it, but after walking for a day, Jonah warned the people. A warning is a cautionary advice about a danger. It's, it's just, it's just a, a simple warning. Listen to what the, what, what the Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse 31. For three years I never stopped warning, each of you night and day with tears. Jonah warned the people, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. On occasion, whether it's preaching or whether it's uh, in my home or whether it's in counseling, different settings, I listen to the Holy Spirit and I have to say difficult things to people in the way of a warning. Sometimes the things that I say I absolutely know will not be heeded. As a matter of fact, I can feel the resistance before, well, before I ever say it. Because I know that they already know what they need to be doing. They're just in rebellion to God and in rebellion to the circumstance. And so whether I, whether I say it or not, they're probably not going to listen. However, I feel a, a moral obligation, and I also feel an obligation to the, the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will take my words at the right time, at the right moment, when the person is maybe a little settled down, when they're thinking a little more clearly, and use, listen to those words that I've said, and heed 
the warning. Somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit will speak the same words that I have spoken. The Holy Spirit will challenge them. The Holy Spirit in the quiet hours and the lonely hours of their life, that, that he'll speak a truth that, that I haven't been able to speak. I feel like sometimes I'm just giving the germ thought. Sometimes I'm just heading them in the right direction. Sometimes I'm just giving directions, if you will. That, that's what Jonah is doing in the Word of God. Jonah warned the people, in, in, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. We each of us have an obligation to, 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 to warn men and women of their need of God. Warn men and women of, of poor life choices and poor life decisions. We, we, need to, we, need to, we need to do it cautiously and tenderly and, and lovingly. Sometimes I think that people warn others, but, but the way they do it, they, the, the message gets lost in the attitude of the messenger. Do you know what I mean? That the messenger has done it in such a, 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 a difficult and crash way that, that, that the, the message is lost. I think to myself, it, it was a good deed done, but the attitude with the deed just ruined it. It just absolutely messed it up. Listen, we are to give warning, but we're to do it as in love. We're to do it with gentleness. We're to do it with kindness. We're to, we're to humbly give the, heed, give the warning. And on the same token, we're humbly to accept warnings. The warnings that God has given to us. The God, the Holy Spirit has given to us. When do we give warnings? When, when we give warnings when people are, are, are not thinking wisely. When they're, when, they're, when they're making poor choices and we give warnings when people aren't acting wisely. We just simply speak the truth in love. Jonah, Jonah the prophet of God, warns Nineveh that in 40 days, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. Number five, the fifth thing and last, we need to expect God to use us. Expect God to use us. Listen to the word of God. The Ninevites believed God. They humbled themselves, putting on sackcloth. Even the king sat down in the dust. Then the king proclaimed a public fast. Then let us all pray urgently to God and let us turn from our evil ways and let us stop all our violence. Who knows? God may yet reveal, uh, may, may yet relent and when with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. And when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not do what they had warned him to do. Listen, the Holy Spirit of God gives us multiple chances, second chances, third chances. The question is, what are we going to do with this one? God speaks to us. His Holy Spirit challenges us. We know what to do. Even Shakespeare said that we know what to do. Houses have been cottages, poor men's princesses, palaces. It's a goodly divine that follows his own instruction. We generally know what we need to be doing. In this second chance that God has given to us. We need to leave this quarantine, this, this time period in our life with a different spirit and with a different attitude. We need to be grateful for the things that God has done for us. We need to sing His praises. We need to walk with Him. We need to do His will. We need to, to make it a priority of our life to seek His face and be about the things of God. We ought not delay because delay is disobedience. We need to accept our responsibilities as believers to warn those that need Jesus so desperately. To do it in a, a way that pleases Jesus, a way that communicates God's love and God's word, all at the same time. And then, and then we need to accept that God wants to use us. You have to think about it. Jonah, totally disobedient to God, swallowed by the fish, regurgitated on shores with a message from God. 
He has to believe that God wants to use him. God wants to use you. He doesn't give you that burden. He doesn't give you your job. He doesn't give you all these opportunities for yourself. He gives us life, breath, resources for one reason, to accomplish his will in my life. Tony, the other day, said to me, he said, really, Pastor, I feel like in a strange sort of way at the store that I work at, that I'm a first responder. I'm a first responder to the hopeless because I have an opportunity to give the reason for the hope that lies within me. That's what it's about. It's about taking this second chance or this third chance or this fourth chance that God is giving to us and using our lives for his glory. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this time to be together. Thank you for the church of Jesus Christ and for the hope that lies within us. And now, Lord, I just ask you today that you'll be with your church. I pray, Lord, in these quiet times, these times when we're shut in, that we'll think of you and your love and your grace and your purpose for our lives. Direct our paths today. Thank you for new life. Thank you for their love and for their faithfulness. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would energize us, that you would fill us and empower us, and make us to be who you want us to be, not who we want to be, but who and what you want us to be. Watch over us, we pray today. Father, for the way that you help us and for the way that you answer prayer, we'll give you the praise. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you, new life.